This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Well, it's official for the first time ever, Americans bought more than a million electric vehicles in less than a calendar year. The National Auto Dealers Association reports that sales of EVs in the U.S. through November hit 1,007,984 units. That's up 50.7% compared to last year, while the overall market, including ICE vehicles, was up 12%. So, EV sales are growing four times faster than the rest of the market. Interestingly, the NADA says that franchise dealers represented 39.7% of all the new BEVs sold so far this year. And that makes us sit up and pay attention, because when the NADA starts tracking the market share of EVs sold by franchise dealers, it's a huge change. And all those EVs are starting to have an impact on the demand for oil. The International Energy Agency, or IEA, says that EVs now make up 13% of global vehicle sales, and that number will grow to 40 to 45% by the end of the decade. All those electrics will reduce oil demand by 5 million barrels per day, which is more than Canada produces. And Canada is the fourth largest oil producer in the world. The IEA says the world will hit peak oil demand in 2030, which is 10 years sooner than it predicted in 2017. The U.S. is tightening up its rules for which EVs qualify for the full $7,500 tax credit. If EVs use batteries or materials from China, they won't qualify for the full subsidy. And starting next month, some Tesla Model 3s will only qualify for half of the credit. The obvious solution is to use batteries made in the U.S., but any company that wants to mine battery materials in the United States faces an entanglement of regulatory red tape. It takes 10 years to get through all the permits needed to open a mine in the country, compared to only two to three years in Canada and Australia. Automotive News reports that Ford and Rivian are urging the White House to speed up the process while maintaining environmental standards. And the White House is urging Congress to update the General Mining Act of 1872. The Department of Interior says the U.S. urgently needs a modernized approach to approving new mines. GM wants its salaried workers back in the office. At the beginning of the year, it told employees they had to be in the office three days a week, but they could choose which days. But now CEO Mary Barra says they have to be in the office Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at a minimum, as long as they live within 50 miles of the office. The new policy goes into effect on January 8th. GM says it's making the change, quote, in order to meet critical business needs and retain company culture. But while GM is trying to get workers back into the office, Lamborghini is shortening the work week for people on the line. The automaker just reached a deal with Italian unions where workers on two shifts will alternate a five-day week with a four-day week, cutting 22 days from their schedule each year. And three shift workers will alternate between a five-day week with two four-day weeks, cutting 31 days a year. Despite the reduction in work hours, workers are getting a 50% increase in bonuses and a one-time 1,000 euro bonus. Lamborghini is also hiring 500 more production workers to offset the shorter week. The work pace at Lambo must be quite leisurely. It sold 9,233 vehicles worldwide last year, so we estimate it makes about two and a half cars an hour. It looks like NEO could be giving up on making its own batteries. It had plans to supplement some of its vehicle production with batteries that it developed. But now the CEO of the company says that it will outsource all of the manufacturing for its own batteries. And Reuters takes it a step further, citing sources 
Hussein Neo will completely spin off its battery unit and seek outside investors. Vertical integration can be a great thing because bringing development in-house gives the company flexibility and higher profit margins. But vertical integration also takes a lot more investment money. And if you don't have the money, you can't make the investment. And NEO says it's making changes at its battery unit to cut costs and improve efficiency. It also helps that China has the biggest and some of the best battery makers in the world. And the EV startup is likely to continue to lean on its current suppliers, CATL and the CALB Group. Nearly half of Bosch's plants already use AI in manufacturing for scheduling, monitoring, and quality control purposes. But now the supplier is launching several pilot projects to integrate generative AI into its manufacturing. It will be used to create images to develop solutions for optical inspection of parts and to improve the AI that it's already currently using. Bosch says the generative AI will reduce the rollout and setup of AI solutions from the current 6 to 12 months to just a few weeks. And depending on the size of the plant and what it produces, Bosch says the technology can lead to cost savings of six to seven figures per year and plant. Volkswagen is launching bi-directional charging on its ID family of EVs in Europe. Any model with VW's larger battery pack, which has 77 kilowatt hours of usable space, and ID software 3.5 or higher, now has the function. Models that have already been sold can also unlock bi-directional charging with an update to the new software. However, VW doesn't say if it can be done with an over-the-air update or if you have to take the vehicle into a service center. At first, it will offer a vehicle-to-home function so your car can supply power to your house if you need it, which also requires an integrated home energy management system and a home power station. Customers could also add in solar panels and a battery storage system as additional sources of power for a home. In the future, VW says it will add the ability for its EVs to add power back to the grid as well. And we think if more people actually knew you could earn money by doing that, EV adoption would pick up. Depending on where you live in the world and what your utility offers, we saw estimates that people could make as little as $120 in the U.S., but as much as $3,000 a year in Denmark with bidirectional charging. And it's not just for EVs. Stationary storage systems can also be charged during low demand times and then sell electricity back when demand is high. I think that's why we're seeing so much activity in this field. And now Daimler Truck is creating energy storage systems from old electric bus batteries. 28 packs that are no longer suitable for use in its Isidoro buses are combined together for over 500 kilowatt hours of storage capacity. These storage systems could really be used for any number of applications, but one interesting scenario Daimler presents is using the units to store new batteries as well. The idea is a fleet would have a new battery in the storage unit, so it only operates at low loads until it needs to be swapped out with an end-of-life battery, or it's there just in case of an emergency. That brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey, and by Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game, at CES January 9th through 12th, 2024, Intrepid's looking forward to seeing you at our booth 3666 Las Vegas Convention Center in the West Hall. We'll be demonstrating the latest and greatest in the software-defined vehicles and zonal architectures, automotive Ethernet technologies like 10-base T1S and multi-gigabit. See you at CES 2024 Las Vegas Convention Center in West Hall booth 3666 or visit intrepidcs.com sales.